we are the story. Well, my story with picture houses, it begins when I was about two. And we used to live in Melrose Road in a place called The Buildings, and everyone knew it as the Billogs. And we lived right on the top landing. And my favourite speck was under the table, just by the window. They had fantastic music, our family, the Clarks. They loved going to see musicals. And the one that they were all going to see at the time was Carousel. And I think that came out in 1954. So I was about two and I'd be listening to this music. I'm still affected by it now. La 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 Still gets me going to this day. And that was before I'd been taking the pictures. My first excursion was to a great picture house called the Commodore. And it was just over the bridge in Bootle it was. I got took there to see The Wizard of Oz and I screeched the picture house down. I was so terrified when the witch came on, the wicked witch, and someone, I think it was Dorothy, threw sugar water over the witch and she started going, I'm melting, I'm melting. <laughs> now the Commodore, it was the sight of uh, a terrible embarrassment for me. And my Auntie Kathleen and my Auntie Muriel, who were my dad's two sisters, they loved the pictures. That was where they went, you know, every opportunity they could take, they'd take you to the pictures. And sometimes, even during the, the school week, I'd get took on a Wednesday night. Now, Psycho was playing. Everyone was terrified to go and see Psycho. But I was taken by my Auntie Kathleen when I was 13. Now, you'd have to be, I think it was 16 then, maybe, to get in the pictures to see an adult film. And uh, to make me look older, she put this crazy hat on my head from the 60s that it looked like emu. It had a great big fairy bird standing up on me. <laughs> and to get the bus on a Wednesday night, you know, in the winter it was dark and you'd be getting on the bus at six o'clock. Well, we get to the Commodore to see Psycho and I'm really underage by a big margin. And it, we goes in there and Kathleen's ruse to get me past buying a ticket. She said, I'll get the ticket. She said, you go over and get the sickies. I said, okay. So she gives me the money and I goes over to the kiosk to buy the, the cigarettes. The woman looks at me and I said, eh, cigarettes, please. <laughs> she went, Which ones? Well, my bottle went and I went, chocolate ones? <laughs> And I come back to me Auntie Kathy and meet this pack of the chocolate sickies. And uh, I went in to see Psycho. And I remember watching it. I got really scared, so I took my coat off and I threw it over my head and I was watching Psycho through my sleeve. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, we, we loved the pictures. The Rio. We'd go there on Saturday afternoon and they'd, they'd still have cowboy movies on, you know and lassie movies. You'd be all in there with tons of other kids. And the deal that excited you was that you were all together, you know, and you could check out young lads your age and give them the eye and share sweets with them. And there was, even then, you'd watch people bunking in, you know, kids who were running down the side and the shadow would play across the front of the screen. And the Astoria on Walton Road, and I remember going there with Leah McCormick and she was my best mate. This was about 11 because it was when the Beatles movies were coming out, you know, Help and Hard Days Night and that. And uh, I remember going there to the Astoria to see a Hard Days Night and the noise that we made in that cinema screaming for John Lennon. I was always shouting for John Lennon and she was always shouting for George Harrison. Going to the pictures and especially if you were taken there during the week, that was the biggest thrill going for me. You know, being, being took to see South Pacific, I went to see that at the Odeon. And we were already 
aware of the, of the tunes first before we went. And, you know, all things American. I think our family is that generation were the first Hollywood victims to that programming and the adultery of uh, the icon of stardom and, you know, the, uh, the propaganda that came with it. It had a massive effect on me. You know, our family held talent competitions every week and you'd be made to get up on the table and you're all asked to do a turn and you didn't get a round of applause necessarily. You know, my dad would throw a wet dishcloth in your gob. <laughs> there was another picture house I used to love going to. The Abbey. Yeah, now that was sort of like an abbey on the hill because it had all of its own space outside. You know, there wasn't shops next to it. There wasn't a cafe next door. It really had presence. And that was another great bus journey from Kirby, a, a route that you never normally took, which was the Nosley Village way, the east side of town. And then you come round from there to the big imposing abbey. Lawrence's dad, Bill, we went to see Clockwork Orange at the Futurist and uh, Soul and Green. And both of those movies, you know, they still resonate throughout time. And it, it was showing us like a, a, a dystopian world, or like a nightmarish scenario. The Futurist. That was a lovely cinema. I remember the foyer there. It wasn't very deep, yeah? It was quite close to all the activity that was passing you on the street. And yet you felt as though you t stepped into a time warp because it, it was sort of like Edwardian feel, very plush. I, I loved all that to the pictures. The, the curtains always fascinated me, how elaborate it all was. You know, that the, the way that you were plunged back into the darkness of the womb, took you off into this multi-dimensional world. I loved when we opened a lesser de Brezhnev at the Odeon, and it was on there for two years I played at the Odeon, yeah, non-stop for two years. And um, I went down there one afternoon myself, I thought, oh, I just fancy a little go of Brezhnev, a little hit. And I went into the Odeon, and there was a load of pot smoke all coming from the front row. <laughs> <laughs> and that's how free you could be in a, in a picture house. To connect the two points of being about seven and wanting to be an actress, you know, a storyteller, a messenger, and then actually seeing yourself on the screen, that's a little bit mind-blowing. And it, it gives you a shock because your nose is six foot big and you don't look, ever look the same because something transmutes and you're hoping that's the acting you know, playing a character, because you never look the same in anything else, you know, it's always changing. The difference with the cinema is it's able to transform and transmutates, and the alchemy of it's fascinating. Because you might be working with an actor and you can't see what their particular gift is. You think, oh, I, you know, they just maybe look good and that's all they're going to bring. No. When the camera turns and the lights a set, something special comes through and you don't get to see it until you're watching it yourself on the screen. So I like all that alchemical process to do with the making of film and how everyone is transported, even the actor who, who's appeared in it, is taken the same place that the audience is delivered to. I think all mediums have disintegrated. I think the, um, the level the artistic level and the creativity of everything in the mainstream has deteriorated. I don't watch television. I think it's a big rubbish bin. Old movies, I think, are far more creative. It's deliberately been dumbed down. It's deliberately shrunk the creativity and it's got negative messages that it implies to everyone. If you watch some of the old movies, they've got things to teach you. But you get predictive programming, don't you, in films, where the, it's like social engineering. So you'll get a film like The Hunger Games, and The Hunger Games is all about a really nightmarish world whereby you have one part of society, the poor, completely controlled 
red taped up to death and starving and not allowed to collect rainwater, not allowed to shoot a rabbit on the land or grow anything. And yet just a mile down the road is this, you know, Elysian heavenly city where only the rich live. And so they're sort of like predictive programming, putting that out there, you know.